so this is the uh, second attempt or another attempt at uh, lecture material that um, does the proper derivation of uh, Bernoulli's principle. I've done this in the past, and I gotta tell you that. Um, so you will see it if you watch this lecture video. Every time I do this, I kind of mess it up. Um, yeah, during every semester I make some subtle mistakes, and uh, I got through this somehow. And um, and with the, uh, I mean, I'm okay with the the edited version of it that's here. Uh, it doesn't have any serious mistakes in it at the end, but. Um, I gotta tell you that uh, this length of it, it's uh, uh, highly unsatisfactory to me. It shouldn't really take 40 minutes. So let me um, give a second try at this lecture uh, using the textbook resource. So instead of trying to drive this from scratch, which I've done here and I can try to redo the exact same thing. But instead of that, let me uh, read it through the textbook and as a kind of model of uh, how um, how you should how i think you should be benefiting from this uh, uh this condensed written material that's uh, available as your required course resource so this is uh, from chapter 14 which uh, if you recall earlier we skipped after chapter 13 we went straight to chapter 15 <laughs> because um uh, we um, of all the 17 chapters that are in this long textbook, uh, the one chapter that I thought if um, we rushed through it and we didn't spend a lot of time on, the, the one chapter we would be okay doing that is chapter 14. Because um, if you, um, the kind of the field you go into, uh, maybe mechanical engineering or civil engineering where fluid mechanics is important to you, you will learn so much more than what we can cover here. So it's okay to skim through it, rush through it. So within chapter 14, section 14.6, Bernoulli's equation is where Bernoulli's equation is introduced and derived. So I uh, will read through this together and I will pause and comment uh, where I see something. And I gotta tell you, I haven't actually read through this in detail before. Maybe I should have, <laughs> but uh, one benefit is get, you will get uh, genuine modeling of um, uh, what it looks like when someone's reading through a, a dense technical material like a physics textbook. Um, I do have some benefit of um, knowing some of this stuff already, but I'll try to uh, role play uh, someone who's just seeing this for the first time. So section 14.6, Bernoulli's equation. So it says, as we showed in this figure, I have a feeling it's a figure in previous section. So let me right click and open a new tab <laughs> so that I don't lose my place here. Yeah, it's in previous section. Um, uh, yeah, okay. I, I think I'm okay with that preview over there. Uh, yeah, so something narrowing and the last changing. Yeah, good. I think they probably covered what we call continuity equation. Uh, the speed of the fluid flowing fluid increasing that's uh, um, that's uh, dictated by properties of fluid and geometric constraints on it so when a fluid flows into a narrow channel its speed increases that means its kinetic energy also increases the increase the kinetic energy comes from the network done on the fluid to push it into the channel right the work kinetic energy theorem that we covered way back when we were introducing energy. Um, also, if the fluid changes vertical position, work is done on the fluid by the gravitational force. So there must be some kind of potential energy associated with that. So I'm, uh, as I'm reading it, I'm connecting it to the things that I've learned previously. Uh, you've heard me say physics is cumulative. This is how it's cumulative. Um, a pressure difference occurs when the channel narrows. This pressure difference, this is, a, I think, a, basically a statement of experimental fact. And hopefully, we'll see some derivation that uh, justifies theoretically why this should happen. This pressure difference results in a net force on the fluid because the pressure times the area equals the force. Okay, And this net force does work. 
think that makes sense conceptually. Uh, recall the work energy theorem. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what I was saying earlier. Difference in the kinetic energy comes from the network. The, the network the increases the fluid's kinetic energy. As a result, the pressure drops in a rapidly moving fluid, whether or not the fluid is confined to a tube. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I don't know if that makes fully full sense, but I'll move on. So when you are reading a dense technical material, what I would say is that you have to strike a balance. So you can't speed read through it. I can't read. There are many common examples of pressure dropping in rapidly moving fluids with the last sentence. This effect was observed as far back as mid 1800s when it was found trains passing in opposite direction to precarious towards one another. And then like, I can't speed read. Don't do that. <laughs> you should uh, take your time reading through it. But at the same time, if a particular sentence doesn't make sense, ignore it and keep reading. <laughs> and uh, uh, and it might be that it's necessary for you to come back and read it a second time. And I'm advising you to ignore it and keep reading because maybe as you keep reading, it makes sense to you eventually why they said this. Uh, you don't want to get stuck at a single point just because what? might have been a minor misunderstanding or uh, um, a kind of uh, uh, not lack, but like less, uh, smaller degree of understanding than what we are hoping for. But, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> there are many common examples of pressure dropping in rapidly moving fluid. For instance, a shower curtain. Oh, I could speed read through this. These are a bunch of examples. Let me read the three. <laughs> have a disagreeable habit of bulging into the shower stall whenever the shower stall. The reason is that the high velocity stream of water and air creates a region of lower pressure inside the shower, whereas the pressure on the other side remains at the standard atmospheric pressure. This pressure difference results in an effort pushing the curtain inward. Similarly, when a car passes a truck on the highway, the two vehicles seem to pull toward each other. The reason is the same. The high velocity of the air between the car and the truck creates a region of lower pressure between the vehicles and they are pushed together by greater pressure on the outside. Um, I guess that might be true. I'm trying to imagine this in the reference frame of these two cars. I guess it does look like the, there's a higher velocity. Maybe. I don't know. Fluid dynamic stuff, I will tell you that a lot of it is um, <laughs> um, intuitively understandable to me. But they're saying this effect was observed. If it's experimentally observed, then yes, I trust that. Experiments, I do trust. Theoretical reasoning, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> when it was found, the trains passing in opposite. Opposite directions are different from the same direction, though. So, <laughs> tip the precarious of toward one another. Um, maybe, I don't know. But, uh, so I'm again doing the thing when, that I described. Whether that effect, uh, um, this is a situation they described is true or not, whether I understand it or not, I don't think it matters too much. So we'll keep reading. Um, energy conservation and Bernoulli's equation. The application of the principle of conservation of energy to frictionless laminar flow leads to a very useful relation between fl pressure and flow speed in a fluid. This relation is called Bernoulli's equation, named after that. Oh, I didn't know his first name. Daniel Bernoulli. Oh, there are, I think, a bunch of Bernoullis. Um, so I'm not going to get too stuck on Daniel, uh, although I guess this is one of the Bernoullis uh, <laughs> who published his studies on fluid motion in his book, Hydrodynamica, 1738. Uh, consider an incompressible fluid uh, flowing through a pipe that has a varying diameter and height, as shown in the figure below. We'll look at that in a bit. Subscripts one and two in the figure in the two locations along the pipe and illustrate the relationship between the areas of cross sections. A, the speed of flow, V, the height from ground Y, and the pressure P at each point. So we have one, two, three, four variables that's going to get subscripts because there are two different locations we'll be looking at. We assume here that the density at the two points is the same. Therefore, density is denoted by, this is not P. Look how different this uh, letter looks from the P above. You should not be confusing these two. Uh, this is letter rho. Um, it's a Greek letter that sounds like R. Uh, 
I usually write it with a single stroke well, um, without any subscripts. Um, so density is constant throughout the fluid because we assume it's incompressible. <laughs> and since the fluid is incompressible, the shaded volumes must be equal. Um, oh, volumes of fluid, I think that's what they're talking about. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I see what their reasoning is. I think what they must be thinking of is if it's like air, um, like the geometric volumes being the same, okay, but they might be drawing the distinction between the volume of the fluid. If the fluid is compressible, then given the same quantity of fluid, its volume could change, maybe. Again, it, I think these nuances don't matter too much. Let me zoom out a little bit to show the whole thing. Yeah. So it's uh, marking one position as uh, subscript one, another position as subscript two, and all the dynamical quantities, they've given them a, a subscript to distinguish between quantities over here and the quantities over here. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, think it might be useful to have this on a, a separate tab. So I have it here. Then I can bring up either in small preview or switch to that tab anytime. Sure. I think that will make the preview look better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we also assume that there are no viscous forces in the fluid. Yeah, this is important part. So the energy of any part of the fluid will be conserved. It's important both for the derivation and for observation um, that Bernoulli's equation isn't always true. Like with the water, you can see significant differences, and that's because water does have viscous forces. To derive a Bernoulli's equation, we first calculate the work that was done on the fluid. Okay, yeah, so let me do a side-by-side -side thing, because uh, I think I feel like I'll probably be needing to refer to this figure frequently and jumping back and forth. It's uh, super annoying, distracting. So they have this quantity they are labeling with a DW. Uh, D means infinitesimal or very small amount. So very small amount of work done. They are saying um, that uh, the force on this fluid element, F times uh, right, right, force, displacement dx1. So that's how much work you do on this if you push it for that distance. And they're subtracting, uh, oh, that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I think this is the situation I'm thinking of. Um, imagine the... Um, so... Uh, oh, not, it's, it's, this is the situation that they are um, having, that they have in mind in the rest of the derivation. So think of the your portion of the fluid that's uh, here. You can uh, think of this fluid as um, kind of doing this movement um, over the some infinitesimal amount of time or some amount of time. This fluid starts out containing this element here. After some infinitesimal amount of time, the whole fluid has moved. And the way it's moved can be characterized this way. This portion has come off, and this portion has been added. And uh, now you might object, but uh, what about this, uh, like uh, the fluid that entered from here into here? That's not the same fluid that came out this end and into here, right? That, <laughs> it's not the same fluid, but when we are considering the kind of the change of energy of this uh, of this uh, a portion of the fluid, whether the fluid that came out at this end is the same fluid that came in at this end, doesn't matter. So uh, we can do that switch rule without affecting any mathematical expressions. So in this first equation that they write down, so what they are looking at is 
for this element that moves in, there's going to be a positive work being done by this force as it moves this distance to enter this portion of the value. That's been done, positive work. And as this portion of kind of squirts out <laughs> on this end, this force is going to be doing negative work because it's pushing against the direction of motion. And uh, with the negative work done, it's going to take out some energy. And that's why there's a minus sign there to indicate all that. So it's so okay. That expression, I think, it makes sense to me. And um, so when you look at mathematical equations, you've seen me done both. I think uh, in the past the sessions, you've seen me basically skip over equations because uh, it made my head hurt. <laughs> Sometimes I do that. What I will tell you is that when it's a derivation and you are seeking to understand the derivation, you should do this exact thing I'm doing, which is taking enough time with each equation and making sure that you understand it before you move on to the next. Um, so it, it looks like a, I'm doing different things at different times. And it, that's because, yes, I am. Uh, there's an element of judgment where um, and I will tell you, if you're not sure, the easy thing to do by default is skim through it first because the things that were mysterious, maybe the second time you see it, it'll be less mysterious. So, um, so like if you're not sure what to do, skim through it first. You can always come back later. That's the advantage of written material. So, okay, this equation makes sense. So I'm moving on to the second line, the infinitesimal amount of work. Okay, this looks similar to that. So I will bet they are expanding out F1, yeah, F1 is that pressure times area. They've done that there, yeah. And here, it, F2 is pressure times area, yeah, they've done that there. And ah, they are doing this interesting thing where they're taking, it's so hard to, <laughs> let me do use the highlights here. Um, selection doesn't work. Um, so they are taking this expression, cross-sectional area times the displacement, and express that as a volume element, dB. And as they are expressing volume element, they drop the subscript. Um, you know, instead of saying dV1 and dV2, they've said dB because they've constructed the situation so that these two have the same amount of fluid. That's how uh, I was describing. Oh, some fluid comes in here, the same amount of fluid goes out here. So. Um, Okay, so the, the, the second equality makes sense. And now that they've gotten dV in the same form, they factored it out. So it's a pressure at one point here minus pressure at the other point here. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Uh, that, so that line makes sense. dW is equal to difference in pressure times the volume element. It's quite elegant to derivation, and I think <laughs> that's the part that I keep messing up when I'm trying to do this on my own. Um, the work done was due to the conservative force of gravity. Hey, what? Let me keep reading. Um, work done was due to the conservative force of gravity and the change in the kinetic energy of the fluid. All right, I'm gonna keep reading. The change in the kinetic energy of the fluid is equal to this. Okay, difference in kinetic energy. For this infinitesimal amount of fluid is moving is one half. Um, so they're taking the amount of mass here, which, uh, so they're doing the same thing they did when they were setting up the equation. So, the, it, so taking this amount of fluid that you start out with, they are imagining adding this amount, that's the part of the fluid that squirts out, so plus one half M2 V2 square minus, and they are imagining taking out this portion of the fluid, part of that uh, comes into this common shared portion. So minus one half uh, uh, mass of this fluid times V1 squared. And um, because the density is constant and the volume is the same, these two masses are actually the same amount. So they factor it out as rho dB. So I think this expression for change of kinetic energy makes sense to me. The change in potential energy is 
again, small amount of potential energy change, and they're doing the same thing here. There's a, um, there's a portion that squirts out. There's a potential energy here that's associated with that height. That's a MGY2 minus there's a, a potential energy associated with this amount. Subtract that since that's in the common share of the part, MGY1 and express mass in terms of rho dB and express um, G is the same constant. And I guess uh, if they were being consistent, this uh, should have been M1 and M2, but it's fine. It's the same quantity anyway, sorry, M2 and M1. That's what it should be, but again, it's fine. <laughs> Doesn't matter here. Okay, so these two equations, I'm fine with the equations. And the energy equation then becomes, they say this, okay, that I agree with. The amount, infinitesimal amount of work done, that it's a numerically equal to the infinitesimal change in kinetic energy and the infinitesimal, um, the infinitesimal change in potential energy. Uh, what I have an issue with, and th that's the reason I was posing, is the kind of causality assigned here. Like work done was due to the conservative force. That's good. I, I don't have an issue with that. Change of kinetic energy doesn't cause the work to be done. It's the other way around. <laughs> work done causes the change of kinetic energy. But uh, the nice thing about mathematical equations is that when you have an equation, e equation doesn't care about causality. It's equal on both sides. You can reverse them. It's fine. <laughs> so, so this equation is valid. No problem with that. Now that we have this, we can use the three pieces derived above. Plug in the expression for infinitesimal amount of work, expression for infinitesimal amount of change in kinetic energy, infinitesimal amount of change in potential energy. You see a lot of uh, things that cancel out. dV, it's common volume element, cancels out. And, oh, I guess that's it. <laughs> um, so the difference in pressure is equal to. And this is really the reason for uh, introducing density in this context, because um, so if you just kept this as mass, um, that's like the simplest form it will remain. But by expressing mass as density times volume element, you can um, have you can cancel out the volume element and have something in terms of a constant quantity. So, so when you rearrange this equation, that, that gives you the Bernoulli's equation. And, um, and, and, and that's the derivation. You can think of, so this form of uh, equation is nice because it, I hope this reminds you of the uh, conservation law. Uh, it, so you have some quantities measured and uh, tagged at some point that's equal to the same combination of quantities, pressure, this kinetic energy related quantity, this potential energy related quantity, tag them measure that on other location. And it, it's, it's showing some sort of form of conservation. And that's because, yeah, it comes from conservation of energy. So, so yeah, that's the derivation. And I think this is definitely shorter than my other longer meandering lectures. So I'll replace that one with this. And, and yeah. So the, the relation states and all that, and you can read it through the rest. Uh, yeah, special note must be made here. Pressures at the same height in different parts of the fluid may be different, yeah, if they have different speeds of flow. So like here, you can imagine the Y1 being equal to Y2, but if the diameter of the, uh, if the size of the tube is different, then speed will change and that will cause the pressure to change. Yeah, and they have have some examples which I encourage you to look through. Uh, I won't right now because I want to do the other thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Entry mode that's fun. Uh, you might have seen a demo of. Um, so I believe there are two practical things. Um, there's a, like a Dyson uh, fanless. Um, Wait, they might not be entry, but there's a, like a fanless, oh, no, a bladeless fans. I think they use some sort of fluid dynamics uh, phenomenon. I don't know if they call it entrainment. It might be, not sure. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, they, they give you other examples too. So just let that be. Yeah, I think. 